was conceived ten years ago after Isaac Asimov died. Isaac Asimov was a friend of the institution, did a lot of his research for his 600 plus books here in the libraries of this institution. And his uh, surviving family members wanted to find some way to commemorate the life of Isaac Asimov. And it could be a plaque or a statue. We said, we want to make something that lives and breathes. And thus came this panel debate, this annual panel debate, where we invite leading thinkers in a controversial subject about which there's hardly any agreement. And we put them on the stage, <laughs> and we chat on this bleeding edge of cosmic discovery. This evening's subject is from Pluto to Plutoids, a look at the new solar system. The new solar system. There have been books titled The New Solar System for the past 30 years. Every few years there's something new and somebody puts out the new solar system. Wow. Maybe we'll have to do this again in a few years. It turns out, almost exactly 10 years ago, we were designing the new, what would become the Rose Center for Earth and Space. And we saw that some new objects were being discovered in the outer solar system. But we're about to cut metal. We're about to invest $230 million in the world's most modern and largest museum of the universe. <laughs> we saw that these new bodies being discovered in the outer solar system were kind of icy. They had orbits that were odd, like Pluto's orbit. We thought to ourselves, perhaps Pluto might be a member of this new class of object being revealed. So we opened the new exhibits in the year 2000, grouping Pluto with these new objects. And while we were in a grouping mood, we looked around the rest of the solar system to see what else would be grouped together. We grouped the gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. We grouped the rocky planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. The asteroid belt orbiting between Mars and Jupiter. And this new zone, beyond Neptune, where Pluto was a member, we grouped that together too, a new family photo of the solar system. We didn't do this sort of in a vacuum, we actually held a panel, much like this, in 1999. This is the 10th anniversary of that panel. Some of you may have even attended. It was before this kind of configuration had the moniker of the Asimov panel today. So we were kind of doing this even before it was an endowed series. And in that panel, we invited all the people who mattered in that conversation. One of the discoverers of the first icy body in the outer solar system. We had the biographer of Clyde Tombaugh, the discoverer of Pluto back in 1930. Got to get him. We had one of the people on the committee for the International Astronomical Union's nomenclature group. And others to discuss and debate what to do with Pluto. We here were not convinced that uh, we should do anything different from where we were headed and continued in that vein. The New York Times caught a hold of it. A year, it took them a year, but they wrote about the exhibit a year later. <laughs> Page one story in the New York Times, Pluto not a planet, only in New York. <laughs> well, that's when the hate mail started. And, uh, and I think, the lesson there is not so much that we did something different with Pluto. The lesson is that we were learning so much more about the solar system that perhaps the time has come that we need to rethink, if not our nomenclature, our lexicon, but perhaps how we should go forward thinking about the contents of what we're this sun. And so today, I've got some of the world's experts, some of the world's experts on this. Oh, by the way, Again, if you're new, let me just tell you what this is. These are not lectures to you. You're going to be eavesdropping on our conversation. This is a conversation we might have in the coffee lounges of academia. It might be a conversation we have if we invited each other over to a dinner party. This will expose you to the workings of creative and productive scientific minds. You're eavesdropping on that conversation. I'll be directing it to make sure we hit all the high points. But keep it in mind, you're eavesdroppers. <laughs> At the end, there'll be ample time for a Q&A, so look forward to that. Oh, by the way, at the end, um, there's a book for sale, which I happen to write, uh, <laughs> called The Pluto Files. The Pluto Files, on the rise and fall of America's favorite planet. Uh, it's available for sale after, by agreement with the administration here, uh, whatever is sold 
tonight, the royalties that would otherwise go to me, I'm writing a check back to the museum uh, to continue educational programs here. So. buy 20 copies instead of one, which you might. Uh, there's a panelist who was originally invited but could not make it. His wife uh, had an accident, not a bad accident, but it, she's doing fine. Uh, injured her leg and could not walk. He stayed home in replacement for him. Uh, we have the first panel.